The Wall Street Journal editorial board calling out NATO in an op-ed. The headline, Ukraine can win with enough help. An excerpt from that, the public message out of Thursday's meeting of NATO leaders in Brussels is sure to be heavy on unity and resolve in support of Ukraine. But the unfortunate reality is that the Democratic alliance confronting Vladimir Putin still isn't doing enough to ensure the Russians' defeat. A new Fox poll finds 63 percent of voters say they believe the United States should be doing more to help Ukraine. That's a mix politically. 63 percent of anything is a lot. And there is strong bipartisan agreement on that issue, as I'm mentioning. Look at that. General Jack Keane is in focus. Retired four-star general, Fox News senior strategic analyst, and chairman at the Institute for the Study of War. General, thank you for being in focus today. I, I want to begin with where, where or how we begin to lead rather than waiting to see what Putin's going to do. Kim weapons are being talked about, so we know we've got cyber warfare going on to fight as well. I mean, when do we, how do we take charge at this point? What should next steps look like? Well, we've been talking about the same thing for weeks here, that yeah. it's certainly applaudable that we're giving support to the Ukrainians, but we've been parsing our words about what really is the mission here. The mission is, is, is really to help the Ukrainians defeat the Russians and drive them out of the country, and there really is an opportunity to do that. Obviously, the situation is stalemated at the strategic level, and the Ukrainians are, are making some tactical gains. Let's get all in to help them do that. I mean, obviously, the greatest deterrence from Russia ever attacking a NATO country is their defeat in Ukraine. And, and the Biden administration, for some reason, doesn't even want to use the word, we want to win. We want the Ukrainians to win against the Russians. And why do we keep wringing our hands almost daily about Russians' possible use of WMD, chemical, biological, nuclear weapons, and cyber attacks? Let's stop talking about that. What we should be doing is making unequivocal, strong statements, United States and NATO, when it comes to WMD, Harris. It mm -hmm. is unacceptable. We will not let it stand, and we will take decisive action against you, and you will be responsible for expanding the war, so, not the United States and not NATO. That is what is needed. I'm looking to see if it comes out of this NATO G7 meeting, but I suspect it will not. So you just gave a red line. That is something we have not gotten from the Biden administration. And when you talk about the possibility, the threat of nuclear war, a new Fox poll shows a large majority of voters are concerned about not only Russia's invasion of Ukraine, but also about the threat of both a conventional and a nuclear war between the United States and Russia. And today, this from Russia's deputy ambassador on nukes. If Russia is provoked by NATO, if Russia is attacked by NATO, I don't know. So we are, we are a nuclear power. Why not? It's not the right thing to, um, to, to threaten Russia and to try to interfere. So uh, when you're dealing with a nuclear power, of course, you have to calculate all the possible outcomes of, of your behavior. Huh. The New York Times reporting that the White House has quietly assembled a team of national security officials to sketch out scenarios of what to do if Russia unleashes its most powerful weapons like nukes, chemical or biological. The group is dubbed Team Tiger, and that team may have its work cut out for it, General. A stark warning this morning from NATO's chief. We'll watch together. We see the rhetoric uh, and we see that Russia is uh, trying to create some kind of pretext accusing Ukraine, United States, NATO allies for preparing uh, to use uh, chemical and biological uh, weapons. As you're talking, General, I'm going to ask my team to pop up that statistic, that, that polling again, so people can see where Americans are falling on this and how worried they are. Is that worry legitimate at this point? Well, look, you just heard the NATO chief. There's the hand ringing again. 
No, no positive statement about where we stand on that. He's just hand wringing. And what the deputy uh, from Russia was doing there is int trying to intimidate us. It's brinksmanship. They're trying to get inside our head. I think the fear inside this White House is palpable when it comes to uh, nuclear weapons. But think through this issue just a little bit. And, and we can have a conversation with the American people about it as well. There's not a lot of leadership uh, in, in talking about it other than the hand wringing. I mean, if Russia used nuclear weapons, the, the loss to them and the loss to Europe and the world writ large is, is devastating. There's no advantage for them to, to do something like that. But listen, we didn't deter Putin from invading because our policies were so weak. They showed up on the border 60 days after Biden took the oath of office. And we, we delayed the shipment of arms that the Trump team had scheduled for that period of time because we didn't want to provoke them. We have always been taking a step back and operating from a position of weakness. What I'm suggesting is the way to deter the use of those weapons is make certain that they know that we're going to hold them accountable and they absolutely will pay a price for it. That's, that's what I'm seeking here. Not the hand wringing that we keep seeing going on, and you just saw it uh, from uh, the chief of NATO, who I have a lot of respect for. Wow, what you said, the fear is palpable in the White House. And if we see it, we know that the enemy sees it too. Uh, I want to get to this. Uh, this is where we are with Russia right now, according to Pentagon spokesperson John Kirby, just a bit ago on America's Newsroom. We have tried uh, on numerous occasions to connect Secretary Austin with his counterpart, Chairman Milley, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, has also tried to connect with his counterpart. We've made multiple uh, uh, ch uh, multiple uh, attempts here, uh, but they have not uh, they have not answered up. They've declined to, to take these calls. They're not taking our calls, General. Not surprising. I mean, given the performance of the of the Russian military and they're back on their heels, and as opposed to knocking down one city after another, which was their intent, they're digging in outside the capital city, which was the main effort. Russia has gone to ground, and they are preparing defensive positions against the Ukrainians. Who would have ever thought that was possible a month well, ago? Certainly not the Russian generals and not most of us. That's why they're not taking the call. They don't have much to say. Real quickly, General, it's got to be quick. If they use Kim weapons, then basically Putin's saying he's willing to hurt his own people because there's no way to hit that urban area if that's his, you know, disastrous plan without killing some of his own troops. I mean, it would be horrible. And what if that cloud reaches a NATO nation? I mean, it could happen. Well, yeah, mo mo most definitely. Listen, Russian troops were in Syria at air bases and uh, spread out uh, at multiple bases when Assad was using chemical weapons. I don't mm. think the Russians care one way or the other about anything like that. All, all they care about is, in this case is their military objectives and their political and strategic objectives. And that's that's just mm. the facts of it. If they really cared about their military, they would—that unit would be taking care of their dead and taking them off the battlefield. It would be sustained logistically with food and water and supplies. They don't have systems and, and, and a moral compass even to take care of their own troops properly. So they would be somewhat dismissive of the idea that Russian troops could hurt, be hurt by the use of a chemical weapon. They fundamentally don't have that kind of a moral underpinning. And that, those are the facts that the Russian citizens need to hear. Of course, he's blocking all of that right now. But those people waiting for those soldiers to come home, those families of those military men and women in the Russian force. That's the truth they need to hear. Uh, General Jack Keane, always great to have you, your expertise, your time. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Harris. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.